Hello, what is up? Welcome back to another episode of Hitting the Bars with your girl Savvy Wavy One. Kelty, how's it going? I'm doing good. It is sunny and gorgeous and like it's not supposed to be spring in Canada, but it feels like spring. And so everyone's happy. Everyone's in a good mood. Nothing can go wrong. People are just yeah, talking hear, to you. It's like a heat wave. We're supposed to have 90 degrees this week. Like it's wild. Oh, wow. I know. Yeah, Sweden too. Megs was like, I, oh, it was sunny today. I was like, questionable, global warming. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, questionable that we're happy mm. about this. Mm. Um, no, I love that. Even in my Seattle peeps, it was 70 yesterday. So I always assume it's 70 for you if it's 70 for them. Yeah. I, I talked back to my Uber driver because I was dr- driving back from uh, Edmonton and there was all these people in the street. He's like, oh, all these people in the street going to the beach. I'm like, yeah, it's great. People are out. Don't be mad about it. But I didn't say it like that. I was like, yeah, no, it's great. It's great to see people go out. And then he's, you know what? It was a nice reminder because he was being a grouch. And he's like, true. It is nice. I'm like, see? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. sometimes someone needs to just be reminded they're being a little grouchy. Yeah. There's a special type of person, though. Like, mm-hmm. I know a lot of people that are from Seattle that love the dark. Like, my brother, I was on the phone with him, and he was like, I love darkness. Like he's like, I'm so mad that we had daylight savings. So it's like, maybe he's somebody that likes the cold and the dark. True. True. That's valid. That's valid. Can't relate, but I respect. No, exactly. Okay. Shall we get into hot takes? What's your first one? We should. My hot take, less of a hot take, more of a little hack. You never have to tell anyone you're not drinking. Here's why. Let me explain the little hack. You're going out. You want to stay sober. On Saturday, I went out with my friends. I was in M10. I'm going to Vegas soon. I had an anxiety-filled day. If I drank, it was not going to be pretty. I had a like 7 a.m. flight. But also, all my friends are together, and I don't want to be like, I'm not drinking. Shots are coming around. See what I did? I ordered the biggest Coors Light I could get. And then I just said, I'm not drinking hard alcohol. I'm just going to drink beer. And people, I'm like, early flight. People are like, I respect that. So I would cheers with the beer, take a sip. By the end of the night, I drank in a quart of this beer and not a single person had noticed. So there's a little hack. And then you don't have to be the whole, I'm not drinking. And people are like, come on, drink. And, you know, as, as sad as it is, as soon as you say it, people are like, that's kind of, kind of a buzzkill. But it's like mm-hmm. a hack because no one really cares if you're drinking or not. So yeah, are you lying? I drank. It just happened to be two sips, but I drank and no one, you know what? So there's this little hack. You never have to be like, no, I'm not drinking tonight. Just say, yeah, I'm drinking. And just watch people not pay attention to you. (laughs) I can't tell if that's horrible advice or good advice. (laughs) It it works every time because you know what I mean? It's kind of toxic, but it's a nice hack unless you're just, you know what I mean? You just don't want to, don't want to bring down the vibes. And no one I cares. do get there. It's a reminder. There are some people in this world that drink and it like when they're sad or whatever it may be, and it makes them feel good. It makes them feel numb. Mm. I am not one. I am like, I'm, I'll be a hot mess. The there's this one time in college and I had gone through a breakup. It was the breakup before I met Michael, and I was so sad. And my roommates were like, You're going out. And I was like, I really just kind of want to watch Cinderella story for the 20th time this week in bed in my pajamas and eat ice cream. And they were like, No, you've been a loser all week. And I was like, But like, I think I need this. And they forced me to go out. I got so drunk that my roommate found me talking to the floor mat in our bathroom while I was puking. Wow. Are you sure? And from then on, I realized like, Sounds what like would troops. it be? <laughs> I'm just oh, no way. I'm way too scared to do drugs. But um, that's like a joke with my friends that I'm like, mm-hmm. hell no. Don't don't like even weed freaks me out. But um, no, I just I just was like from then on and you're young. You don't really understand. You're like, maybe no. it will make me feel good. I was like, oh, I'm not a sad drinker. Lesson learned. And it was mm-hmm. it, I'll never forget. It was burned into my brain that she told me that that happened. I was like, oh, my God, it was the drunkest I'd ever been in my life. And I, I didn't even have fun. I went home. You have to, it, it's just all through experimentation. As, like some people, yes. like I won't even lie, being a little sad, I can drink. Because sometimes if, as long as there's good music, I'm, but if I'm like low energy anxiety, oh, I'm spiraling, spiraling if you give me alcohol. And that hang, is that even the alcohol? It's the hangover. That yeah. hangover, that level of anxiety. No, 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 no. Oh, anxiety. Oh, absolutely. What's your hot take? 
Well, let me tell you first about this funny thing. I trained three 18 year olds today. I've been taking some clients in person Ooh, and doing okay. like really fun beach workouts, kind of full body circuits. Um, just cause I've had some people come up and be like, will you do this? And I was like, why not? Honestly, I love meeting people. So I met her, um, and her friends, they're on spring break and never have I felt so old in my life. I was like, oh my God. I'm like, so like, do you guys like TikTok? Like, what's that like for you? Like, I'm asking them so many questions. Like, what do you do as an 18 year old? Like, it's so different. I know. No, at one point, one of the girls takes a picture yeah. and she was like, oh my God, I'm smiling at it too. How funny. And I go, oh, is it a be real? They laughed at me. Sad. Like, I, I know. I know. <laughs> the fact that, like, so how do you use TikTok? You're just I'm like, like it's so what do you like to do? And yeah. I'm then they ask me where I recommend going out. And it's a Monday. And we live in a beach town. There's nothing even open till Thursday. Mm-hmm. I was yeah. like, oh, honey, no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. And I just thought, wow, you got so much to learn. So much to learn. But yeah, no, I really tried to not feel old, but I did feel old. And that's sad. But um, it- also, oh, let me tell you something. They go- Please. They said, oh, um, where we live, Adam Sandler will come by sometimes. And there's like random people that will come here. And there's a big Jewish community here. So he has a bunch of friends. And they're like, oh, yeah, um, we hang out with his daughters. I'm like, that's super cool. I love Adam Sandler. Happy Gilmore. You know, happy. And they're like, is that Gilmore Girls? I'm like, oh, they don't even know that. Okay. Okay. Question though. How the hell do they know Gilmore Girls? But not like Adam Sandler or OJ. Like that's the same. Because it's trendy. That's uh, Adam Sandler. It's trendy on TikTok. Trendy, I guess, but still, you know what I mean? Like Adam, it's one of those. It's like someone who's saying they don't know classical music, like from the sixties or seventies. I'm like, you're uncultured. Yeah, I guess <laughs> I could see that. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like they're so unaware that yeah. they didn't know. Who but no, I was like, Catholic. Both nineties things. That is funny though. That is funny. Yeah, no, I agree. I was like, ha- you just referenced Adam Sandler as if he's significant, but yet you don't know his most famous movie. I was like, uh, but I was like, oh, I love that movie with his kids in it, the Bar Mitzvah one. They're like, oh, we love it too. I was like, you're the age of his kids. That's wild. Mm-hmm. That's I mean, we're not crazy. the age of him, but that's wild. No. Nonetheless, it's just like cool flex, cool flex. Mm-hmm. I told her, very. That's why I'm like, you mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it's also kind of badass that they know him and they don't know. Happy Gilmore. You know they what I mean? They like, think it's like their friend's dad. That's the funny thing. It's just like it's so humbling if he's just a dad. Like there's nothing funnier than a famous man being belittled to being just a dad. Like just being – I think Adam Sandler is probably uncool to his kids at times. And it's totally. like your dad's Adam Sandler. Like the definition of uncool is coolest person. You know what I mean? Like I didn't even think Literally. He, was, he was capable of that. But you know what? Hilarious. I completely agree. But I just had to share that little tidbit because I, I giggled. But my hot take is sometimes you need to be feral and stay out till 2 a.m. You hear that once from me twice a year. I was and say. I know. I know. And honestly, my friends here, they like get so annoyed because I'll leave a party at 10 or 11. And I'm like, it's my bedtime. Like Bentley will be mad at me. And Michael's always game. He's never mad. If I'm like, let's go home, he's like, hell yeah. So we were like, you know what? We went to dinner pretty late, like at 8.30. And we just ended up hanging out with two of our friends till 2 a.m. And it was fun. There was some gimlets involved. It was a good time. And I'm like, sometimes you just need to do that and remind yourself you're young, you're youthful. You don't have to be tied down to a schedule. You can just live a little. And yeah, you'll have a little hangover the next day or be sleepy, but that's okay. Because you're going to remember that opposed to just going to bed every single night at 10 p.m., which is something I struggle with. So, yeah. Well, I try to remind everyone, all of us wellness girlies, the reason we sleep so much, we're healthy so much. When those nights come, you don't have to feel bad. You don't, you don't go into it being like, oh, my God, I screwed up my schedule. You're like, I'm so on schedule. I earned to stay out. Like, your, your sleep routine's dialed in. You're going to be okay if you lose a night or two. So yeah, I've been dialed in on my sleep. So you bet your ass in a week when I'm in Vegas. If I don't sleep, I don't sleep. Da da da. <laughs> Just kidding. What is that like? I sleep when I'm dead. <laughs> yes, but there gets to be that. I was like, but there's a point to that. There's a point. That's why we like yeah. we earn the no sleep. If you're literally never sleeping, that's not going to end well. I agree, and 
I, I, yeah, I just think it teaches you to live a little. And lately I have mm-hmm. not been like, I've been in my hermit era, still am, mm-hmm. but at least it did something that was like social and I got out a little bit because okay. literally like, I just don't want to do anything at the moment. But that, I was like, you know what? I'm feeling spicy. I want to get dressed up. I've got red hair. I might as well do it. Yes. Let's get it out. Let's yes. go out in town before I have to wash my hair. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, should we jump into today's topic, which we thought would Please. be fun to cover? Okay. I'll give the little spiel, ladies and gentlemen. We thought it would be fun to discuss the fitness industry and overconsumption. This was inspired by this girly named Amy Victoria on YouTube. I saw, I actually saw her video through this girl, Tracy, that I met. Tracy Turnblad. No, I'm kidding. What is that from? Tracy Turnblad. Hmm, fairly odd parents, possibly. But um, anyways, she did this whole YouTube video and, and just sat down and talked about the fitness industry and overconsumption in particular, active wear supplements, even break it down to accessories and how... You know, we really see these influencers getting these launches, these weekly launches where they have five to six leggings and sports bras in every single color, Um, even down to FOMO marketing for certain events. Like there's a big lift events that we see or just people going into debt and not really having their priorities straight because they're like, oh, my God, I got to stay trendy. I got to stay in. Um, Also, not to mention the toxic Reddit community of people who have nothing else to do and just sit there and discuss it. So mm-hmm. we thought, why not dive into it as, you know, we both are quite in that space, like not going to lie on that, not going to act like we are holier than thou. thou. I do those weekly launches all the time, but I do think it's interesting to just talk about it, see our real thoughts on it, um, and also just get feedback from you guys. What do you have to say? I think if you followed my content, you all know I'm no... I've talked about this a few times. It's just like consumerism and it's just interesting how I think it's quite common to think of fast fashion and we think of influencers selling and swipe up and this and trend cycles. And we've talked about that, but it it is interesting because now fitness is also in, it's just as equally as fast fashion-y and trend cycles and these leggings. And so many fashion companies rely on that, like hype, this is the new it color and you want to be involved in that color and this trends in and that's, and we knew it in terms of workouts, but now it's also, there's like a thousand little gadgets from Stanley cups to this uh, yoga mat that, and all these things. And you have to have the one and is it the quality? And there's also fast fashion. Cause the thing about fitness gear is it needs wear and tear, but then at the same time you're like, Oh, I want the new thing. But then you get that new thing and it's out and it rips and it's like, what's even the point? And yeah, it's confusing. And as someone myself, like is slowly learning the importance of financial health involved with your fitness journey. And like, I feel pressure so much to follow the trends because I don't want to get left behind. Cause I'm like, Oh, they're going to follow all these other YouTubers that have the pretty new it set. And I don't have the pretty new it set. So I got to buy it because I buy it. Then the people watching it are influenced it more. And it's like that aware in that cycle. Like I feel you and me are both kind of in that cog of trying to keep up, but not wanting to contribute to the problem. And so, but at the same time, we can't just ignore it. Um, so I think that's what we're going to dive into right now. Yeah, absolutely. So my first question is, what is your overall thoughts and experiences? Would you say that sums it up or do you got any more left in the tank? Yeah, I say like my issue right now is like I went from starting, I started with like Lulu hauls like a long time ago. And so it was like, how do I get the new at the end? I know money. So I just like save up to get the outfit that I knew would pop on YouTube. So I'd get said outfit, regardless of what I wanted. It was like, oh, what people want me to review. And then I got more traction and all this kind of thing. And it was, I've worked with brands in the past that always have new items and you have to promote it. And then I've, I've really tried to step back. But then it's also hard. Like I was shopping for this weekend and I was thinking, I was like, oh, what photo, what like outfit would pop in the thumbnail? I'm like, that shouldn't be the first thing I think of. But then do you know what I mean? And that's part of a greater scale. Like I'm so, there's so many influencers now. So that's also the problem. So there's so many ways consumers are being influenced and I'm influenced by influencers. So that's kind of my overall thoughts and experiences right now. Okay. Okay. That's fair. I would say for mine with it, Mm -hmm. I I feel like I, it's quite unique because I started in the fitness community as a consumer. There's, Mm -hmm. I feel like you meet a lot of creators that are like, I just started posting. I don't know. I'm like, no, I actually loved this before I started doing it. I just like Mm -hmm. personally loved everything about 
uh, the fitness industry. Like that's how I got into working out. I was somebody that was like, this is amazing watching all the YouTube workouts. So I was that girl that was like, oh my God. And I wanted to save up all my money for these trendy sets. And I will never forget like the very first time I purchased a Gymshark set. I like had never bought any athletic brand besides Lululemon for Christmas. Like Michael and I are fresh out of college. We don't have any money to spend on these kinds of things. Like I would shop at Forever 21 for leggings. Um, and I saved up and I got this like beautiful, vital, seamless, bright blue set. And I like felt so special. And then I remember the trends kept getting busier and busier. And then I was almost like, then I started posting on my account because I was like, oh, I love sharing this kind of stuff. And then it was like, that blue set was no longer cool. And that's when I really started realizing like, holy crap, there is a problem with this just in general with like, where do you find the staples you can wear over and over? But naturally as consumers and as humans, we like, we look for the shiny things. We look for the newer things, right? It makes yeah. us feel a certain way. Um, I just thought it was interesting because that's kind of how I got into it. And then I started realizing the more and more it, it got popular, the more it kind of came thrown at me. Um, and I feel that way in any industry, like oh, whether it's like what bed sheets you should, fit, you know, buy, what kind of clean cleaning products you should have. And it's like, I've really, really practiced on trying to not just purchase out of emotion and out of mm -hmm. being impulsive. And that was me for a long time was impulsive buying. And now I really make sure like one, I really focus on who I want to work with. Um, if I do, I don't just respond to any brands being like, yeah, sure. Send me this. I'm like, no, I'm going to end up donating all of this. So mm -hmm. I'm really picky with that. And as somebody that purchases things, I'm like, you know what? Let me go through something first. If I didn't like it, then I'll search for reviews, but I'm not going to buy four different cleaning products just because this girl recommended it on TikTok, you know? Oh yeah. I know. Um, I had this like aha moment about a month ago of like, it's so funny. Like I, like, I'm like you, I try to be very conscious of like, and I think it's not new to anyone. Like it's probably annoying the things I recommend because I wait till I'm obsessed with something. And then like, that's all I'll purchase. And I, I try to think really mindfully of things I purchase and that if someone were to buy it, they would want to use it. And just me selfishly, it's something I just enjoy. Um, but with that social media, the hardest thing is like, I feel good. My checklist bots, I've got everything's good. I open Instagram and up until 30 seconds ago, I did not realize that red hoodie existed. And now I'm like, oh, do I need that red hoodie? And I waste the next day just contemplating, should I get that hoodie? Should I? Up till I opened Instagram, I didn't know it existed. I didn't know it needed to be a part of my life. And like, I think that's what's so hard. Like how much mental capacity are we wasting on this like FOMO culture, as you mentioned of like, it, it's just like, we didn't even know it. We don't actually need it. But then suddenly now that you're conscious of it, you're like, oh, well, it would make me happier. And it, the reality is they're usually cute. It's not like it's always junk. Like a lot of times they recommend cute things, but it's just the, the quantity of us being recommended things is crazy. I completely agree, especially with TikTok and TikTok shop. Mm -hmm. And I will get, oh my God, I'm a sucker for the Taylor Swift merch. Oh my God. I am the demographic. Mm -hmm. Literally one time, Michael and I are on a plane and like, we're about to take off. So I still have Wi-Fi or whatever internet. And I look at this thing and it's for the song, You're Losing Me. If you know, you know. Yeah. And it's like this quote on a t-shirt. I watch it get screen printed on TikTok. And I'm like, that's so beautiful. I send it to my friend, Jess. Then I like scroll and I'm like, hmm, I want to see it again. So I scroll back and I'm like, wow, that's really pretty. And then I'm like, yeah. only $18. So then I'm like, no, 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 no. Scroll away. Scroll a third time. And I like go through the process of almost purchasing these shirts for Jess and I. And I just have this like these eyes staring at me. And Michael's like, you're a monster. Like that, they just got you on that. Yeah, but they get you. There is a blessing for living on an island. Not a lot of things Ooh, ship here. That has true. saved me. Let me Can't tell relate. you. It's true when I'm in but, Sunsville, that happens. Yeah, but even little things like, this could even be, I go to TJ Maxx and I love the like makeup aisle. I have yeah. learned, just don't even go to it. Because you know what? I get the say, I don't know if I'm saying that right, beauty blush. That's my favorite blush. I will buy it forever. I have use the same eyelashes from Amazon with the same Lashify like glue. And I'm like, you know what? I don't need anything else. Like it's just like, I, 
actively practicing. And when it comes to the fitness industry, even really with supplements, I've really tried to be like, what brand do I actually like consuming? What does it taste good? And it makes me feel good. It's not filler in it. And like, what am I using almost every single day? Right. Mm -hmm. And like that, that's okay. If you go through phases, like an example is I take magnesium every single night and it has helped me break my uh, melatonin habit Yay, that I'm like, you'd love that. I know I'm looking at her. Let's go, let's um, go. right. But I been like, okay, I want to have a nice brand for magnesium then because mm-hmm. I'm taking it every single day. Um, yeah. opposed to like BCAs. I'm not taking that right now. I don't need four mm-hmm. fucking flavors of BCAs. Right. Fully. Mm hmm. Okay, so should we get into the pros and cons of just – I thought it would be fun to talk even – the girlies, the guys that are listening to us, they obviously are no stranger to the health and fitness community. So – and everything, all the baggage that comes along with it. Let's talk about the pros. And I wrote them down. Um, And I guess I'll I'll state them. You tell me what you think. That first pro to me was creating a community where you feel like you fit in. Mm -hmm. What do you think on that? Yep. I feel like I've said this before, but we used to have religion. We used to have a bit more community. We had school. We've really lost what people are now on the social media and the internet saying third places. We've really lost that third place that you go meet someone that you run into friends. Like we don't really, we don't have time. We're all working or in school, but fitness can do that. And fitness online. A lot of your like third communities is online, which is like a blessing and a curse because it's better that than nothing. Yeah, I agree. I even think like when I was in college getting into working out, I had no friends that worked out. I had one guy friend and we joined CrossFit together. The girls were so mean in CrossFit. I was like such a loner. I would just show up, do the workouts, leave. Then I eventually quit because I was just like, it's not my thing. And I just, I felt really lonely. And that's how I got into the fitness community was I felt like nobody was like me. And even I would be in a sorority and like, like, hey, anybody want to go to the gym with me Monday through Friday? And like, nobody would want to, which was fine. But I was like, yeah. God, there's got to be somebody like me. And yeah. I felt like that's how I found people. And it made me not feel weird. Yes. Um, and I think that's amazing for any kind of community. There could be a clean community. There could be a nutrition community. I have no idea. There could be a dog community. I'm in it. <laughs> but um, Next is getting people together at events. What do you think on that? I love it. Especially like there's always Vancouver is very biased towards this, but whether it be run clubs or like there's always like people doing cold plunge and it's just, it's something to do that's not going to the bar on your weekends and stuff like that. It's like saying you can during the day and active with like-minded people, like we said, and it's just fun to have stuff to look forward to. I think we need a lot more of that, especially if you have like a very ritualistic job. It's nice to be like, oh my God, end of the week, or they're doing a St. Paddy's Day run club or something like that. Mm -hmm, Absolutely. And next one is encouraging people to move. I think first and foremost, that is the best thing, right? Like we never know. We half the time we don't know how to work out half the time. We don't know what, what to start with. And like before we had social media, right. You either had to go to a gym, pay a trainer, whatever, watch a VHS, a DVD, whoever cares. But like we have YouTube now we have like things that like you literally, there's no excuse. They're free at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh yeah. Just following people. Like I love to follow people that like make me crave a workout. Like they make yes. me crave a healthy meal. They make me, Oh, like, Oh, a run would be nice. Oh, I could go on a walk. I I haven't done yoga in so long. Instead of being like, Oh, I haven't done that. I love the people that make you crave moving your body because your body does crave it. And if you're not craving it right now, you're, I know you just vomited. I was like, you, you just got to find the way that you crave it because your body does. Your body's happy when you're moving. Yeah, this is okay. This girl, let me pull her up. I'm curious if you've heard of her, the 18 year old that I was um, training. She was like, Oh, I do this workout class um, in New Jersey, and it's like this 130 degree workout class. I'm like, Oh, she's like, I'll send you the girl. I'm like, How did you find it? She's like, This girl on TikTok. Her name is Cole Matera. Have you heard of her? How do you spell that? K O L. E like Cole. Like no, C O L E, as in like Cole oh. Sprouse. Yeah. That, oh, why did that's how I spelt it? I'm typing it on Google right now. <laughs> I said it different. What's her last name? And then M A T T E R A. Let's see this. And it's like these like- heated workouts, essentially kind of like Tracy Anderson. She does go to Tracy mm-hmm. Anderson, but this girl just posts a snippet of her working out and she's 
dripping oh, yeah, in yeah, sweat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've seen this girl. She is at Tracy Anderson. Okay, I, I didn't know if the whole thing was Tracy Anderson. Yeah, it's all but, Tracy um, Anderson. Okay, yeah, she was telling me, this 18-year-old's like, oh, I love it so much. I found it from this girl. And I was like, that's so cool. Send me her account. And I'm like, she's literally sweating her balls off. I was so shocked that like this girl's workouts, I mean, they make me want to work out though. Like yeah, I see what Morgan was talking about when she was like, yeah. I love it so much. Like I love following her. It's really inspiring. And like, to be fair, some of it, like the movements, I am so shocked. There's not like a male demographic just coming at this girl. But it's like the girlies are like, mm -hmm. yes, we want this. And it's like this Pilates mm -hmm. form of workout with yeah. Tracy Anderson. And she's just dripping sweat. Everybody go look at it because it's weirdly, I'm like, oh my God, I want to do it. I want to take it. It's so satisfying. It's one of those like oddly satisfying things. You're like, oh, because yes. like, sweating does feel good. Like the effort to get there sucks. Yes, when you see I it, you're like, sweating. oh, just like the shower after a sweat like that. Oh, so good. So yeah, I, I see completely that. Agree. I completely see that. Good, yeah. Good I just was shocked when yeah. she told me that. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, it's just 20 seconds of her working out. Yeah. And it's like propped. You can tell it's like just propped up next yeah. to her. Exactly. Golf queen. Um, with that being said, that goes into the next one of meeting like-minded influencers. And mm -hmm. I think you are damned if you do, you're damned if you don't in this industry. True. And True. right. Cause there's those crazy people that go on, you know, certain websites and just talk smack, smack, smack. And I'm like, girlfriend, you got nothing else to do. Like you are so concerned with their life. Mm -hmm. Definitely need to reevaluate your life. But I'm like, and, and those are always, you know, a smaller group of people. But I think it outweighs it when you do get to meet those people that are like, oh my God, this helped me with X, Y, and Z. This got me into working out. This made me not feel yeah. alone. I finally found someone that looks like me. Um, and so it's like, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. You always have that backlash no matter what. But yeah. it is so much more rewarding when you meet somebody, you know, that's like, dude, you may finally made me not feel alone in the world, right? Fully. I think the best part about social media, specifically in the last few years, and it can be toxic, but also be great, is like you can find someone that's so much like you, whether it be like for myself, like always genuinely post the things you love and genuinely only follow people that do the things you love. And over time, you'll have this community of very like, like-minded people, like whether it be people like hitting the bars where it's typically girls that like to work out, but still want to have a martini at the end of the day. And like so much of my social media is like girls working out that go to raves and stuff like that. I'm like, these are my people. Or they listen to Andrew Huber or people like Sav. Like, and the only way I got there is like being authentic to myself and just following people you genuinely like, instead of like you said, falling into the hate and being fed all the things that you're against. And then you can go into whole rabbit holes in that sense. But you said that's such a, it's such a unique way that you can find someone that's exactly like you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And I guess the cons in the fitness community could be, you know, misinformation on whether yeah. it's workouts there. I mean, there's so much, we all, we don't need to go into detail. Mm -hmm. Like we all know that honey bear did not get her abs by doing a five minute, like, I don't know course or yeah. but even like i even think it goes as deep as like how some supplements have harmful ingredients and these girls mm -hmm. and guys are taking them every single day or thinking that it's like this fat burning supplement i had somebody recently that i trained was like what fat burning supplement do you take i'm like honey that's not a thing i don't take a fat burning supplement yeah the worst one of the worst things about like influencing or influencers in the fitness world is like there's so many eyes on them, but there's only so many products you can sell. Like if you're a beauty guru, just promote every new makeup and skincare. And that's a whole nother topic. But I think the problem with like, I've always felt this, the amount of inquiries I get for pushing supplements, it is crazy. So the amount, like, you know what I mean? It's like, how are these people making money? And then they get offered these big things. And typically the worse the product, the more they'll pay because people won't promote it. So then occasionally they just have to have that one person who's like, whoa, that's a big check. And they say yes. And then suddenly young, impressionable people who aren't educated, that's why they're following you, think it's the real deal. And like the classic snake oil salesman. But it's such a weird thing that the fitness industry can sell you workouts, clothing, and supplements. And because of that, it's like obnoxious how many supplements are pushed down people's throat and how many loopholes they can take to get there. We've all seen it. Like, I don't even have to call out any directly and probably 15 just popped into mind, which is just 
absurd. Like the amount of ads we get, the amount of oh, crazy. Yeah, absolutely. And the claims as well too, True. you know, that's mm-hmm. always, but at the same time, I do think you're an adult or a person you can think for yourself, do your research on it True. and like advise from there, but don't worry, get on TikTok and there'll be pros and cons to every single thing. I literally like, I started doing Nutrafol because of my yeah. hair loss and I like go to Nutrafol. Like I wanted to see people's like uh, befores and afters. And this one girl was like, this is why you shouldn't take Nutrafol. And I was like, oh my God. But I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try Nutrafol. I'm a, I'm a little desperate right now with my hair. Yeah. And like, I listened to it. Honestly, I was like, none of these were deal breakers for me, but like, it is funny how I heard like so many great things. And then there's also that information, which is helpful, Always. but yeah. you could also be somebody that I, the, my pet peeve is when people are like preaching to the choir on supplements or whatever. And like, then they're eating or drinking like a Coke every single day. And I'm like, oh, oh my God. so funny. Right. Like, it's just like the people that your rip poison, you apart. People. Yeah. Yeah. They're like rip or they're like scared to have sugar, but then they down 15 tequila shots every Friday. I'm like, but heaven forbid you had a Reese's Pieces. Yeah, <laughs> and hey, I, I have both. Nothing like balance, but it's just, it's just funny. Fitness community can be very counter or like we don't even have to get into it. But the amount of people that are like, oh, I want to touch alcohol or sugar, but steroids I'll do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Literally. They're like, like there's, so, there's so many, like just, yeah counteract no counteracting is not the word i'm looking for why can't i think of it hypocritical contradicting contradicting states in the fitness industry big in health and wellness but what are you injecting in the butt (laughs) true literally um okay shots fired Mm -hmm. um next up is debt with trying to stay cool with brands i mean the girlies, the guys that are like, I got to get this, especially when they sell out, right? Mm-hmm. Like, then they are like, oh, I don't even have time. I'll just do the, I think it's Klarna, where it's like the payment plans and like, oh, yeah, yeah. Karna, you know, yeah, like it's just, it's a yeah. slippery slope for the people that love Very. to shop, right? Mm-hmm. It's even like I had that in my stylist video. If anyone didn't watch it, I did this $20 versus $2,000 stylist. And I thought it'd be a great video. I budget. It was already crazy just to do the $2,000 stylist. And then I get to the video and I realized I had to buy the clothes. <laughs> and I was like, I spent that much money on the stylist. I don't. And I was thinking, I was like, hey, well, if I put this in my credit card and all this, and I was thinking of it. And like, I was, I tried to film it and I went to go buy things, but I couldn't. But, but like, you know what I mean? It's just that cycle you get into of like, oh, I did, or. The amount of times that like you said, you see this new item and it will never come back because Skims finally let out the tank top in your favorite color. And so I'm like, well, if you don't get it now, we might as well get it now because it won't come back. But so like I ended up not buying the things and that's what kind of brought me into talking about finances on there. But back to like what you said, those hype cycles, complete crap. 90% of those like companies just like purposely only buy limited things. So you feel bad that you know it will sell out so you buy it even though you're in debt. Like it's such a marketing tactic. And like I fall for it all the time, which is is, like frustrating. But then at the same time, yeah, oh, marketing tactics, they're psychology, they're crazy. Absolutely. Okay, last con. And like I'm sure there's tons of pros and cons, people. I only wrote out a couple. Mm. Um, Next one is sometimes it feels like work in the gym and that's no fun, right? Mm -hmm. Like I think to an extent, sometimes people are, and that people are always trying to film no matter what they're doing, or maybe they're trying to do the most perfect workout or whatever it is. And the atmosphere is different. And where I noticed that was Alpha Land when you and I went, mm. oh my God, I was like, it made me feel so wildly insecure. Like I just was like, felt overwhelmed, eyes everywhere, judgment everywhere. I don't know. And I'm just like, I used to never feel this way. If you go to 24 hour fitness, I don't feel that way. It was pretty wild. That's a, that's a beast of anyone who's like, oh, I'd want to be an influencer. You got to learn that separation then. And I think a lot of people have trouble with that separation of like, are you just going to work out? Are you going to work on a film? Are you just going out with your friends? Are you going because this reel will go viral or this TikTok and you're going to make that? And are you taking this photo for memories? Are you taking it because you know, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, that's, and I don't think that's an influencer thing either now. Like, I think it's just like, regular person with an Instagram that just wants to, you know what I mean? You're, it's tricky. I feel that even on my personal accounts that I have, like. 
Yeah. I mean, think of somebody that sees somebody weightlifting. Maybe they hate it. Maybe they're like, damn, this is, or it, it makes their body feel bad, right? There's like different yeah. types of movement that like naturally works better with your type of body. 100%. And, you know, it could be something as little as that of being like, you know, I actually don't want to be a lifter. I actually want to be this. Like, I feel like I went through that. I love lifting. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. And that's really what I started. But I'm like, the older I get, the less I care about that. Like, I'm so tired totally. of having, having to maintain those gains that I'm like, I'd rather actually get more into mobility because one day I might have a child and I need to like bend down and pick them up or like, mm -hmm. heaven forbid, have to give birth, right? It's just like yeah. little things like that that's like, you're swayed so easily, but then you're like, at the end of the day, what do you want? What do you actually want? You kind of have to ask yourself that. Yeah. Isn't that the truth? I yeah. Wonder. All right. Bring it, back. Bring it back. Next up, overconsumption tips. I feel like you have really kind of worked on this. I've known you for years and you've gotten really good at this. I what would you say you. for your tips on that? First is I always have a to buy list. Um, I, I use Notion. You could just use the note. I used to use note, note apps. Um, and just anything I buy has to go on there. And it's so funny how often that list will get so big and I'll forget everything, but it is kind of nice. Like suddenly I see a dress I really like, and I'm like, oh, I don't really need it right now, but like it's my birthday in six months. So I'll put it there. And then when my birthday comes up, it's like, you want, know, is that style even in? Did I just buy because it's fast fashion or this actually is a quality piece. And I think that's my biggest tip. And then my other tip in terms of specifically fashion, and this comes to regular fashion or workout apparel, is buy the foundations. You'd be shocked how often you're like, oh, I have nothing to wear. And you go and look on Pinterest and usually the girl's just wearing a pair of jeans and a white t-shirt. And you're like, oh, she's so stylist. But it's because you're constantly consuming the new it thing. But I would buy these items but have nothing to go with it. So by just focusing on the foundation, black leggings, black sports bra, different colored denim, white top, like you figure out what foundations mean to you, go on Pinterest, right? You know, basic capsule wardrobe. And it's not that you have to limit yourself to those, but a couple of years ago, I just stopped buying fun stuff and I bought, spent my money on the things I'll actually wear every day, a pair of Levi jeans, a Skims t-shirt. You know what I mean? That kind of stuff. It's not sexy, but now... If there is the hype item, I have stuff to wear with it. Um, and I found I'm very thankful. And those things stay in your closet for forever. So it's not so much fun. But I, I found it fun personally when you like wrote it out and mapped it out. But that was a long worded way to say foundations, make a list. And very often, once you have that list, you'll forget about that item um, and move on with your day before you purchase it. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Rule of thumb for me is like think on it. No matter what. Yes, always. Put, you could put it in your cart. Think on it, though. We love to, like, window shop no matter what, right? And always. just really think, what will it do for you? Mm -hmm. If it's an outfit, what will you wear it for? Right? Yeah. Like, like, just, like, little things like that that I try to think of before I purchase something. And I've just really this year worked on, worked on that because I noticed that was a pattern. Where, like, oh, my God, Michael literally doesn't buy anything ever. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, he loves to eat out. He loves that kind of stuff. But when it comes to getting that man an outfit, I have to do it. Like I, I like he will wear things like from high school and until like he loves this Lulu lemon underwear and like there's like holes in it at this point. And I'm like, babe, throw it away. He's like, no, it's so comfy. I'm like, oh my God. So it's almost like to an extent of no, like, what will you actually use it for? Exactly. It, will you be wearing it? Now with Michael, he's like, okay, I understand. You know, I need to purchase more underwear. That's a staple, right? Or for me, I'm like, I always buy the same pink underwear. It's not hot. It's not sexy, but like, it's practical. I love it exactly. every single year, twice a year. Oh my gosh. My neighbor, I think I've talked about this. Could you hear it? No. He has the most obnoxious rolling like rawr, 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 car oh, yeah, you and he lets it him. sit for at least 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He just did it. So I'm so happy he just left. Sometimes I just want to scream at him. Um, mm -hmm. Anyways, that's something that I'm just like, know your strengths, know your weaknesses. For me, I'm like, yes. I could be quick to buy something. Michael's not. So sometimes I get his take on it and I'm like, yeah. What do you think on this? Like I have a couple weddings coming up and I'm like, you know what? I would love to get some new dresses, but what kind of dresses will I actually wear for this? Because there are some that I have bought for 
weddings years ago and I still wear them to this day. So it's just being like, what style do you feel comfortable with? You know, the yes. trend may not actually fit you well. And then you're like, oh shit, now I have to take this back. Right. So just being aware, of course, being daring, but just kind of know if you'll use it more. One tip I've recently started doing last year that's helped a lot. Instead of also like thinking about like what to buy, what's, but like realize what you're missing. Like for me, whether it be right now, for example, I ran through all my walking shoes, but every day I don't have a pair of shoes that go with jeans. And every day I'm like, oh, I have a cute outfit, but this, I like pay attention to that instead of just like aimlessly searching, just like notice the things when you grab outfits, what's missing and keep track of that. And then try and like buy something that will go with multiple things instead of being like, oh, I like these black shoes. Be like, no, I need a pair of white sneakers. I can walk in and look for that. So like have a, make a missing list when you put together outfits and what you're frustrated at that you don't have a belt and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. And also always do a little reset in your closet. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. I just did it yesterday. I, clean, I always clean out my closet because Bentley loves to sleep in it, which means a lot of fur. Yeah. Um, so I'll like clean it out and I'll always just be like, you know what? Did I wear this? How Do I like how this fits? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. if I haven't touched it in six months, just get rid of it. You won't remember. Truly. No, no. It says, it, and like the rainy day you need it for. I'm like, why aren't you wanting, why aren't you excited to wear it? You know what I mean? You're clearly not excited. So you're not going to find use for it anyways. Even when that rainy day comes, you're still going to grab your comfy usual go-to. Mm -hmm. All right. With that being said, what is your like non-negotiables? What is something you're like, these are my staples. I'd recommend it. For workout specifically? Workout supplements, you name it. Okay, I'm going to go through workout outfits. Seems okay. fitting. So like my my go-to, you guys have seen me wear them a hundred times, but the Lulu Flow Y Nulu bra with a pair of a line or wonder under leggings or the hottie hot shorts. It just like it's, they've been around forever. You pick the colors that match your wardrobe and I wash them every week. I wear them every week. I've traveled with them. They've survived 600 washes. The color still works, so even if it's basic and black. And then I love a design, a Define Lulu jacket zip up, an aloe crew neck, and then a pleated like tennis skirt from Aloe, Aritzia, or Lulu. And just like with that combo, I can throw in a suitcase. I can survive a full week traveling. Obviously, I need a couple colors or whatever, but just like neutral colors. And it's not the cool new design, but w when would you not need that? And I think putting money towards that first before you get the cute one-armed number has always paid off. And then I'll let you jump into some before I jump into some other ones. Okay. Well, the first thing with Lululemon, they do such a good job at never having anything of theirs go out of style, right? Yeah. Like I just realized that they're so good at keeping these collections and like not flying by with all these marketing tactics, like yeah. props to them. Um, I would say for my clothes, um, I I love I do love Lululemon. I love Align. I still own yeah. like Align leggings and wear them that are army green nice. that I bought in college, and then the Align tops. They are yeah. the comfiest so. tops. I wear them all the time. The washes immaculate. Like the, the quality is great. And then I also love Honor hoodies and sweats. I have never loved a like more athleisure type of company than honor when it comes to their sweats. Like there's something about it that I'm like, even though they have flared legging ones now or flared yeah. pant ones, um, yeah. that's where I get my sweats from. So I 10 out of 10 recommend yeah. that and their effortless collection. And that's like the bottoms that are like, there's a mini little scrunch and there's like yeah. a little contour, but like a black pair, a gray pair, even I wear tan and I wear those every freaking mm -hmm. week. They're so comfortable. It's like butter. Yeah. Love finding that. And also I just have to premise one reason I always will recommend Lulu, not just because I'm Vancouver girly, their quality uh, insurance. Mm -hmm. So if they ever rip, you can bring them back and they'll give you a new pair. So it's like, yeah. that's why I was like, they're expensive, but you just have to buy that hundred dollar pair of leggings and you have that like check. I have a pair of hundred dollar black leggings for the rest of my life versus buying a $20 pair that rip after a few months. And that eventually adds up. 
So that's mm -hmm. why I always recommend it. And it's, you're annoyed, but it, I just like it. Like I'm, I'm not hopping on a trend. I'm sticking to what works, which I guess I'll annoy you guys with the supplements I take. Cause that was another one you mentioned. Drum roll, please. To no one's surprise, AG1. <laughs> like, I do take it every day and I use the vitamin D drops in the winter. I take Element. I try to take omega-3s. I sometimes forget. I usually just get Carlson's cod liver oil, but I hate taking it. So sometimes I'll take like Momentus's fish oil pills. And then sometimes I'll take sleep supplements. Like when I'm having trouble sleeping, magnesium before night, like you mentioned, I use melatonin for travel just to get onto the right time zone. And that's it. And that that's why I promote them because I genuinely use them every day. So it's the easiest job in the world to promote because I'm like, oh yeah, here's just the time of day. And I genuinely love them. So um, that's no cap. It's it's really what I take every day and no one's shocked. I'm sorry you heard that for the literally thousandth time. <laughs> so trendy, no cap. Good to know. Yep. Um, she must hang out with the 18 year olds. But uh, TikTok. <laughs> 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 um, I had mine a little bit more broader because I like mm -hmm. a couple different brands for these things. Mm -hmm. So I always take greens. Recently, I've been on AG1, but I think mm -hmm. AG1 is really expensive. So That's true. I also That's take true. one up nutrition greens. I'm all about like finding a little bit cleaner of things. So mm -hmm. that good, good option and amazing greens. You can get on Amazon. They're sold at Whole Foods, Target, whatever. Mm -hmm. Great company. Love. Um, for electrolytes, I really do love Element. I had like those eye twitch problems that was going on and that really helped me. And then I've been taking ritual vitamins um, that have a lot of electrolytes in them. So yeah, I do nice. love those too. Uh, magnesium for sleep. Right now I use Calm. The taste is not fun. You have to like drink okay. warm raspberry lemon water and I hate that. So another one is the one up Why magnesium. Why would you take it warm? Why it's like so the magnesium can dissolve properly. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, yeah. And so it's just a little weird to me. I don't love it, but I bought it on Amazon, so I'm going to commit to it. And I literally I switch between that and the one up magnesium. Um and that one just tastes way better. But I'm like, you know what? About the comp, so we're going to also drink her. And then for protein, I've really been loving, I think it's called Orgain. I get it at Costco and it's like organic mm. clean protein and then I also buy the cartons. They're super easy just to like cool. pop in and drink. Um, and yeah, those are kind of like what my supplements I've been taking through and through every day. I love, I guess I lied. I do use the odd protein powder or take like a Lani protein shake because you, but they just taste good. Like I'm not going to like, I don't even qualify those as like supplements. It's like, it's a fun way to add Tasty. like flavor to thing. Honestly, it's like 99% taste. I'm like, yeah. why would I use flour when I can use pumpkin? cake and they're like birthday cake flavored flour. <laughs> like that's why or totally yeah so just it tastes yummy but, so. yeah all right well with that being said we are going to say goodbye thank you everybody for listening in um you know what i actually will shout out we got somebody that rated us and left thank us you. with a little written review um Ooh, so fun let's hear it. okay they said easy and Easy, fun, listen, five stars. I love to listen to Savannah and Kelty on my walk home from work. I like the mix of topics they discuss and their easygoing personalities. This podcast is a fun listen, and I look forward to the new episode every week. Thank you both. Oh, so sweet. Whoever you are and wrote that, we love you. You are officially number one in my heart. Sorry, everyone. Absolutely. But, you know, wow. They love the five star. They're, they're, they got number one place right now. <laughs> I feel Absolutely. so honored. I know, right? So... Reminder, if you, you know, write in a written review, maybe we'll read it. We'd appreciate it. And with that being said, we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.